You know, I love these, these times together, especially, especially the first fruit times, because people's hearts are always ready. And, uh, and I believe that God wants to do something tonight in our lives that is unique. And I want to be short tonight because I want to, I want to practice rather, or I want to give you what I believe He wants to give you. Save me new wine. Whatever fills you, controls you. That's why he says you either are going to be filled by the Holy Spirit or you'll be filled of wine. It says do not be filled of wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter number 5 verse number 19. Why? Why does the Bible say that? Because whatever fills you, controls you. That is why the, the enemy is trying to fill the earth with the sound of fear, intimidation. That is why he used a little virus. He placed a name upon it. He introduced fear across the globe. But thank be to God, we don't belong to a kingdom that can be shaken. We belong to an economy that cannot be shaken. And that is the eternal kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you there? Save me the anointing. I first just want to lay a quick foundation and then we're going to, then I'm going to show you just a revelation here. You have to understand when Jesus came onto the scene, he could have chosen any vessel, but he chose a man. In actual fact, as the enemy attacked a woman, God reset the standard a couple of hundred of thousand years actually later where God chose to be born inside of a woman. If you ever wanted to know how humble the Lord is, He chose His creation to get birth by. And the Lord had to do it this way because He couldn't save man any other way. He could have gone through, let me say it like this, He could have done it any other way. He could have showed up all by himself and just simply do it. He could have upset the, all the rules, all the laws, all the standards. He could have done it that way. But the Lord chose to fulfill His words and to stay within the boundaries of His word. Because the Bible says that His word cannot fail. Amen. Come on. The word of the Lord over your life cannot fail. The word of the Lord permanently cannot fail. If God would have done it by another way, He would have revealed himself outside of his scriptures but now he chose to stay within the word and he gets born through his creation i always like to say it's one of my favorite sayings that mary carried the blood that would save her one day and so when you speak about jesus to christ you always have to speak about two parts you have to speak about jesus his humanity and christ his divinity or rather let me say it like this jesus speaks to his human nature Christ speaks about the Spirit of the Lord inside of him, upon him, and working through him. You have to understand the Spirit of the Lord was on Jesus completely and fully. He was without measure, the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. That means this, and I want you to catch this tonight. That means this, you can have as much of a relationship with the Holy Spirit as what you want. Let me throw, go just to the dark sun and then throw it over to the light. The Bible says when he reached the other side of Gadara, a man demon possessed came to him. The man possessed by a demon was filled with 6,824 demons. That's a legion of demons. 6,824 foreign spirits lived in a man. Now the number should not impress us. What should impress us is the capacity to carry the spiritual realm inside of you. If a man can carry, oh can I have somebody here that's alive tonight? If a man can carry 6,824 dem demonic entities or demonic spirits inside of him, do you not know and do, you not, do we not understand how much capacity we have to carry the Spirit of the Lord? I want you to get the revelation of why you need the anointing. Because just to have it means nothing. You I would have, have read a book about it. You would have, people would have spoken about you. And there's different dimensions, of course. And we always speak about, the, when we speak about the anointing, we of course speak about the Spirit of the Lord. Because the Spirit of God is the anointing. It's the divine enablement to do. Are you there? So, I don't want to teach. I just want you to catch it tonight. So, you have to know how the anointing operates. It is God, the Spirit, or the Spirit of God living inside of God, the man, Jesus. Or it's the Spirit of the Lord living in Jesus. But now Jesus, the man, needs to live out his whole life in obedience to the Father's commands. It was his life of obedience to the Father's commands that made him the firstborn from the dead. You have to understand that when Jesus lived his life for 30 years, before he started his mission, and by the way, whenever God speaks over your life, 
it ends a dry cycle over your life. Between Malachi and Matthew, it's dry. God speaks, everything shakes. Why? When He speaks, that is the last moment that the stuff stays normal. Because when He speaks, He's a king. He decrees. He's God. He decrees. His word cannot come to Him back. Are you there? So what He has said about you has to come to pass. Here's a simple thing. If you don't do it, He's going to choose somebody else. But His word cannot return to Him. You have to do it. Or if you don't do it, your child will do it. And if they don't do it, their child's child will do it. And if they don't do it, their child's child will do it. But somebody's going to do it. Faith and obedience. And obedience and faith. And here's what I want you to understand. And so Jesus as God, Jesus as a man, hang on the cross in full obedience to the Father. It was the Father's will that sent Him to the altar. You have to understand how powerful the altar is. Everything, even, even, even if you go, if you understand uh, Satanism and any other religion, and we're not a religion, we're a relationship, because we're not driven by rules, we're driven by passion. All of them will establish an altar, because an altar is a gate. So they will always have an altar. When Jesus died on the cross, that was an altar where the Father spilled the Lamb's blood. Why? He was a topology. He was fulfilling the Scriptures. Because up to that stage, it was a sinful man that came in with a, a blemish-free lamb every year, poor little lamb. And that man, the Bible says, would come in from the outer court to the inner court to the holiest of holies, and they will tie literally a rope around his leg he will offer up the lamb for the sins of for the sins of the people. And if he himself had sinned, he didn't make it out. God will kill him inside, literally, and they will pull him out by the rope. 